if we understand some of these things, we'll be able to disentangle emotion from politics. But Trendy unfortunately, most of the young people have invested emotions into politics. Mm. Once you invest emotions into something, wisdom will be missing. So instead of investing emotions, we need to invest wisdom. If you invest wisdom, that will give you the upper hand to ask all the relevant critical questions. Mm. You see, Rollins made quite a profound statement. He said that it doesn't matter who becomes president. You can even go to the devil's den and bring the devil as president. If he has critical people in the country who hold him accountable, the devil cannot click to his devilish best. He would rather do what the people want him to do. And if we, if we take the space to educate people to understand politics, I may be NDC, I may be MPP, but it doesn't matter who is president. If the person goes wrong, I will go after that person. So the person sitting there will be very much aware that I don't have gullible masses. Because why do people resign elsewhere in the state? Yeah. Why? Because it's the same duopoly. It's the same poli two political parties, power alternating. But why do they resign? Because they know they are dealing with an enlightened class of people. Very intelligent. So if you do something you will not be told to resign on your own. You sit down because the relationship that exists between the power and the, the people and those in power is intellectual kinship and mutual respect. So once you go off, you know that you have to resign. But in our case, the people out there know they are ruling fools and they are emotionally charged. When the issue comes, they will not look at the issue. They will, they will discuss where the person stands across the political divide. Mm. So that gives them that leverage, that advantage. Come on, let's spin anything. I don't know, we have a media that will also spin the narrative for us. So that is the difference. But if we take education to a certain level where people understand politics, where people understand issues of governance, I don't know, the day, they will go after whoever that is there as president. It doesn't matter where which political party he belongs to mm. and i think that is my vision that is the plan when we get there trust me we will have good governance because the system will force whoever out how, there how, to how do, do we get there are there specific things we're supposed to do to get there or? Uh, yeah, yes i think we are getting there through this advocacy through this political education because You've been around for quite a while. If I ask you that politics as it used to be 10 years ago, is different from politics today. Today you see a lot of young people moving into the political landscape. Politics used to be a preserve of the aged. Few people in fancy code who think they've been to A-class schools and politics is for them. You don't question them, but today it's changing. So over the years, they've used poverty as a tool. Poverty has been used as a tool to cow the people into subjugation. Because you are poor, you can't challenge your boss. Once you challenge him, you, you, whatever, <laughs> whatever incentives or whatever goodies that you get from him, the person will cut it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you become impoverished. Yeah. And if you look around Af Africa, the blueprint is the same. It's the same blueprint. Impoverish the people, make poverty a potent political tool so that mm. you can control them. So that has been the narrative. Mm. It's the reason why they don't want to create incentive for young people to take advantage. If you go to America, you see, they've deliberately opened the border. People are going in because the average age in America, I think the last time I checked was around 43 years. 43 years, your contribution to the economy cannot be sustainable. So they want young people. So you, you often hear people walking all the way from Mexico, from Brazil to mm, America. Mm. If somebody can have the strength, the fortitude and the energy to walk on foot to US, from Mexico, Guatemala, wherever, it means that person has strength to go and work. Mm. And these are people, they are getting to the country to go and work for them. Fortunately for us, Africa, we have young people in abundance, but we don't... So that's why our young people are now leaving? Leaving. Because America is a very welcoming place for them now. Yes, yes, because the system is such that America economy is, is debt economy. Every single person living in America is in debt. Either mortgage, you are paying the mortgage, either you are paying a car loan. So you can't sit in America, you've been there for a month and say, hey, I'm not working. It's not possible. <laughs> because <laughs> you got to pay bills, man. Exactly. So because of these things, you are forced to work. The job opportunities are there. But here, who is creating the job opportunities? Monies that are meant for some of these enterprises are channeled into other flimsy, unreasonable <laughs> enterprises. Like, like the National Cathedral. Mm. For it, I, I was so much angry enough in Ghana. Have you heard that statement, the youth are not angry enough? 
Yes. And what does it mean? Yes. And what's your... Yes, I think if you look at the, the level of mismanagement, the state of Ghana at the moment, and if you look at the kind of reaction uh, that is <coughs> being exhibited by the youth, you see there is this kind of, it doesn't correspond to, okay. or the level of de degradation is higher, but the anger is a bit minimal, mm. it's contained. But you can't blame them. You see, I think the political system is such that, especially the media, growing up, we used to listen to a radio station where a panel member, one belonged to the NDC and the other side is the MPP. Then the host is sitting as a moderator. His job is to retest messages and stuff. So I know the day we are speaking to an issue. The NDC person say, hey, it is true. The NDC, the MPP say it is not true. Then the host, who is supposed to clear, mm -hmm. clarify the mm -hmm. issue so that the average listener will be clear on their minds that mm -hmm. this is the exact case. He would rather be reading test message. So at the end of the day, we mm. listen to radio for information. So you rather listen to the radio and you become more confused as never. Mm. Because after listening to the whole episode, you are unable to tell who is actually telling the truth. And th so this has been in play for several years. So the average Ghanaian over the years, they are hooked to some of these kind of journalism. Mm. So at the end of the day, you can't blame them, you understand. And by orientation or by culture, we are very timid. Because we live in a society where even an older person does something wrong and you are bold enough to confront the person to say, hey, this is wrong. You attack, you attack as either arrogant or disrespectful. or disrespectful. So we were raised to whatever the situation is, just keep quiet, just watch it because it's the game of the aged. Just let it play out. But mm. I think over mm. the years... It hasn't served us any good. It's the mm. reason why. But you, you guys seem to rebe re be rebelling, though, because now I see more and more of people that will classify as the youth. Yes. I mean, taking on some adults, and you know. Y yes. Is it some take it way to to the <laughs> extreme end, where like just insults Insult. and just you know. Yes. But just to challenge them, you don't think that's happening now, like challenging the adults? Y yes, it is happening because of the new wave of media the standard has surfaced i was speaking to you about the new media the social space you see the platforms are quite diverse so today you don't need a traditional media with just your phone with just an account in any of the platforms you can just go live express your opinion mm. so today mm. nobody's controlling the knowledge the narrative as it used to be then mm. today people can get access to information today is so easy to sit here just a tab on your phone do comparative analysis mm. you can see what is happening in kenya you can see what is happening in Cote d'Ivoire. then it gives you room to do that comparison then when you do that i don't know the day you ask questions critical questions if you're not getting the answers that is where some of these things come from mm. so mm. i'm not sure the youth are say they are they are rebelling but they are consuming information there is the free flow of information that people are consuming when you consume information you become enlightened and once you become enlightened you can't sit fold your arms you mm. act with it mm. so people are acting based on the information that they get. they get it's unfortunate some of the information are not refined because th there is no regulation anybody at all there is this misinformation disinformation campaign that is running around so depending on which kind of information you listen to that informs you, your thought, your thinking. But I think we are getting it right because this emotionally charged NDC, MPP, partisan politics, partisan activism that has over the years dominated the political narrative. A, a bit people are getting out of it because people are consuming information. They're becoming enlightened. They're becoming critical, asking all the relevant questions. It's the reason why today you find somebody in the MPP, they are bold enough to hold their own party accountable. Mm -hmm. It's not many. In the end, this is the same thing. So I think we should be happy that we are having critical young people who are seeking information and the information they are consuming, they are not just sitting on it, but mm. rather acting and ensuring that people will act on it mm. because you see what i've realized is that every politician dream of ruling quote and unquote an unreasonable group of people that is the, the easiest thing dream is ruling an unreasonable yes group of people. Be because the best thing that can happen to any leader is to rule fools they don't ask questions whatever that you throw in their wake they they swallow it but that is quite a sound bite and he said the best thing that can happen to a leader is to rule fools yes <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so easy for them so they want the status quo to remain like this yeah so at the end of the day 
instead of going after them, we go after one another, yeah. depending on where you stand across the political divide. Yeah. Instead of channel our anger to those with entrusted political power into their hands to protect the estate, we rather go after one another, emotionally charged in the name of partisan politics. So mm. I know that they, they are free and our division creates strength and they leverage that strength to do whatever that they do. It's the reason why our politicians today don't feel ashamed. Mm. There are certain comments they feel free to make, they throw it. I know the day you wake up the following day on radio, you see full soldiers and journalists fighting and others trying to. There are a lot of Spain doctors around, you understand? They, their job is to correct the narrative just for a political expediency mm -hmm. and stuff. But if the youth become more enlightened, more resourceful in mm. this regard, I think mm. the political narrative will change. Okay. And it is gradually changing because of the new media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of the media, new, new media, definitely. So, so being where you are at now, seeing everything, yeah. let me just throw this at you. Is the emergence of Cheddar good news for the youth? Has somebody that you are looking for or the youth is looking for finally come? Is that the next direction? What's your assessment of Cheddar yeah, in the political scene. I, I must be very honest to you, with you. Yeah, I think I have on my own studied politics, I have studied governance, and I've seen a lot of stuff. You see, there is this anger in the system. People are peeved because since the establishment of this fourth republic, we've not got into where we dreamed we wanted mm -hmm. to be. The Ghanaian dream is nowhere to be found. So people are obviously frustrated. But you see, to think that you can capitalize on this anger for political capital, it doesn't come easy because we are not the first country to try that. If you go to the United States of America, uh, several attempts have been made to topple the duopoly, that is the Republican and the Democrat. Democrats. Several attempts have been made, billionaires, but they were not successful. Why? Because instead of setting down, planning, and set machinery in motion, because Winning political party is about proper organization. Putting all the necessary machinery in place, organizing people to get to wherever that you want mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. It has become so easy for people that people think the youth are angry. So I can just imagine maybe a few months to election, mm. just like Cheddar's case. So and you, you are saying in a way he's taking advantage of the... The anger of the youth? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, I think, you see, if you look at the political landscape today, everybody is angry, especially with the recent kind yeah. of governance that we have. People are angry. Yeah. So people might try to become an accidental leaders, taking advantage of the situation. Mm. But you realize that they have not planned, because if you have planned, and you really want to be a leader, these mercenaries I'm talking about, you set it in motion. So you will not emerge in an election year wanting to, president, wanting to be president when you know your contenders are established political institutions that has been a system for over 30 years. They have root every nook and cranny of this country. So you cannot just use a few months to say, I want to be president, and that will be a reality. You understand? So I think. Uh, it's good. It's good that some of these young guys are coming up, but I think they really need to do more. Mm. Because from where I sit, I don't see any of them as mm. a. The, the general talk or the general assumption is that the voting population majority are youth. Yes. You know, they'll tell you that the majority, the seventy percent of people that yeah, are voting yeah, yes. are the youth. Yes. So would it make sense that somebody like Cheddar would say, "Okay, let me capitalize on this bulk, this percentage, and and expect that I can upset the system." Yeah, I think uh, that, that was the calculation. That was the calculation. Emotionally charged young people on various social media mm. platforms, chastising and bastardizing the political establishment. Now they've extended the scope to cover both the NDC and the MPP mm -hmm. because these are the two parties, political party has been alternating for the last mm -hmm. 30 years. Yeah. So the anger is switched on these people. So I think... The attempt is that okay, let me capitalize on this anger and mm. then but you and see give them an alternative. Uh, to give them an alternative. But to convince people and offer them alternative, the alternative must be seen as a robust alternative, a well-defined, planned out, thought out alternative that has a structure, that has a plan, you understand. So when people are divorcing, for instance, let's say a woman in a bad marriage, the, the person has kids. And he's been lured away from the husband because the husband has been more treating the wife. And there is another man standing in the shadow. Come, I will take care of you. Is that man standing in the shadow secured? 
as a reasonable person, that is what you ask because you are leaving your, 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 you are not just leaving the marriage, you are leaving with your kid. Is that man ready to take care of your kid? There are lots of considerations. So, a woman might want to make sure that the man standing in the shadow mm. is secured and is really prepared to. But, oh, just luring me to come, maybe just to have a one night stand with you and then he dump you. You understand? So, mm. I think that it's good that these major political parties are coming up but it has never been easy just to topple the duopoly because mm. if you go to uk the conservative and the labor it, it, it doesn't yes. come easy so i was expecting that not just cheddar but the various individuals will come together emerge into a potent political force then people will know you are really serious you really want to topple the duopoly but individually fragmented if you look at them Every single poll that is imagined, the, the, the numbers that are attributed to them are not quite encouraging. So as a reasonable young person, I might think that I'll give you my vote to these people. I'm just, just throwing it in the bin, you understand? So I think they really need to. But the problem has always been everybody want to be president because I had an encounter with one of them and I asked the same question. Why are you not a guy pulling your resources together to form a potent force to offer that kind of competition for this the person, when we, went off, when we went for our meeting, everybody wanted to be president. So the, mm. the whole <laughs> meeting ended in chaos. And, and my question is, if at the individual level, yeah. you cannot sacrifice your personal individual ambition for a greater good, do you think you can be a leader? Mm. So I think, you see, people are falling for some of this because a lot of the people are emotional. I am not an emotional person because before I was taking my nut out for somebody, I really want to know what I'm getting into. Mm. You, you understand? Mm. Because they say, all oh, that glitters. It's no gold. Yes. <laughs> 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 and when that